Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Environmental Science, video 21. It's on environmental economics. Before we talk about that, let's make sure you have a basic understanding of economics, and there's no better place to start than with the law of supply and demand. Imagine I want to sell these bobblehead dolls, but I don't know if there's much of a demand out there. And so if we make a graph where we have the price on the Y and the quantity on the X, we can look at what I'm doing. We call that the producer or the supply curve, and then we can look at the consumer or the demand curve. And so it's the first time I'm selling these I don't know if people are gonna want it and so let's say looking at the supply curve that I charge four dollars for them I don't make a bunch of them and so that's gonna be right here on the supply curve I don't want to invest a lot of money I'm not gonna make a lot of profit I don't make many now there's also gonna be a demand curve this is how much they want it and so if it's really cheap they want a lot of them if it's really expensive they don't want very many and so if we play this across at four dollars we find that their demand they would demand and 40 of them. I've only made 20 of them. And so what do we get? We get a shortage. I didn't make enough of them. Now I know a little bit more. So people want them. There's demand, it looks like. So I'm going to go all in. I'm going to spend a bunch of money. I'm going to make a lot of them. And I'm going to charge a lot of money, hoping to get a lot of profit. And so if I charge $8, watch what's happened to the demand. Now the demand is 20, but I've made 40. And so what do I have at this point? We've got a surplus. We have too many of them. And so you can figure out where I'm headed here. What do I want to do? Is is I want to make sure that I hit right where those lines cross. Again, there's no graph like this. This is just trial and error, but you want to hit what's called equilibrium, where the price hits the demand. That's economics. Now, what's environmental economics, though? It says law, supply, and demand is right, but what you're not including are the externalities. In other words, to make a bobblehead, it's way too cheap. It's cheap because you're using maybe cheap labor, you're making it in a developing country, maybe you're polluting the atmosphere, so you're really, your price curve or your supply curve should be pushed in that direction. So if we push it in that direction, what does that mean? We're gonna have a new equilibrium at this point. In other words, things are gonna cost more if we play, pay for externalities and people are gonna have less stuff. And so the economy is really the wealth of a country and a good way to measure that is through the GDP or the gross domestic product. Now the decisions that we make are governed by economics. What we're really trying to do is allocate scarce resources and we're using those resources through production, making things, consuming them, and then moving them around. So that law of supply and demand applies at this point. Now the problem is that GDP and supply and demand both don't take into consideration these externalities. Those are the costs to the environment and ecosystem services. And a lot of the time what we end up with, for example, if we're looking at the atmosphere, is pollution. We're increasing carbon dioxide levels. It's leading to global warming. And so a lot of people are putting forward this idea of economics is at the center. That's going to have our solution. So let's move towards environmental economics. If you just let the market go, it's not going to solve this problem. We need a sustainable system. First thing we have to do is replace the GDP. A good alternative would be the GPI or the Genuine Progress Index that includes these externalities into the wealth of a nation. We could also add valuation, so give value to these ecosystem services. Is, and then we may have to do some regulation to decrease the amount of pollution. An example put forward is this idea of caps. So we're capping the amount of pollution that you have and then allowing some of those caps to be traded. There's some controversy there, but the key point is to understand that we're a highly developed nation and that other countries are developing. And there's something called the Kuznets curve and this, that, this idea that until your country is wealthy enough to think about the environment and environmental economics, you simply won't. And so if we think of the economy like this, it's production and consumption. So we're taking in energy, using ecosystem services and using resources. And so this we can think of as a slow economy. It's not consuming much. This would be an economy that's consuming more energy, more resources. And so a good measure of that is going to be the gross domestic product. How many things are you producing and therefore consuming? And so if we look at it, in the U.S., the GDP is over $50,000 per person. But there are going to be certain areas where that number is going to be less than 2,000. So we see that, that same thing of developing versus developed nations. 
If we look at, however, the world over time from 1950 till 2000, you can see that the GDP keeps going up. And so you might think, well, this is great. So countries are getting wealthier. We don't have anything to worry about. But my model was inefficient. So what I had included was the inputs, but not the outputs. And so what we're really not dealing with is waste. And so as the economy turns, watch what happens to the waste. We deplete the inputs and we increase the outputs. There's pollution, health concerns. As the economy goes faster, waste becomes a bigger deal. And so some people are putting forward this idea of replacing the gross domestic product with the GPI or the Genuine Progress Index or indicator. And what that includes is not just how much money you're making, but pollution, resource depletion, the health of the people, education of the people. And if we look at that, that across the world, according this, to this, our progress model has been flatlined for the last 40 years. That means that we're not advancing. So the market has only brought us so far. And so environmental economics is how can we use the, the power of economics to solve this problem? The first one is the idea of valuation. And so if we look at the economy on our planet, it's $75 trillion. But remember, outside of that, we have ecosystem services. Services. Those are things that the planet is doing for free. So, for example, they're filtering our water, they're taking in carbon dioxide, they're providing energy. And so we don't pay anything for that. So we should add value to that. If there's no monetary value to it, people are not going to see value in it. We also have to discuss the idea of externalities. This pollution coming out of this truck, the people in the truck are not paying for it. The people who are moving the material and not paying for that increased carbon dioxide and what that's doing to the planet. And so we have to start discussing those externalities and it may lead to certain regulation. So if we're looking at two factories, factory A and B, and they both are polluting. So if we say they're polluting like that, we have to value that pollution. How much does it cost? What externalities do we have from that? And then we have to regulate it. So we could set a cap. This is the amount that you can pollute. We call that a cap. And some people are putting forward this idea of cap and trade. What does that mean? Well, factory A is well within the cap. And you can see that factory B is way outside the cap. It's polluting too much. And so the idea is that you could trade some of those credits from to factory A to factory B. So you can keep polluting because it's essentially within this cap. And in return, you're going to pay me money. Now, this is weird. We're creating these economics of pollution, but it's been pretty successful. If we look back at the acid rain program where we were doing cap and trade with the amount of sulfur dioxide, it, it showed some increases. And so a better way to look at sustainable economics is a model like this. So what we want to do is take the power of that economy and return those ecosystem services and recycle that waste. Because if we can have a sustainable system like this, we can decrease the amount of waste. And this is something that allows us to have increase in not only the G GDP, but the GPI as well. Now, what's the problem is that countries are all along the spectrum of development and there's the Kuznets curve and it kind of goes like this. It's this idea that as your economy is increasing, income is going up, you'll actually worsen the environment until you hit a point where you can start to improve the environment. In other words, as a country is growing, they can't spend money on these ecosystem services and they won't. And we also have problems with globalization now. So once we have a developed country with really strict regulations, we can move some of those factories to an area where they don't have such strict regulations as well. And so did you learn the following? Could you pause the video at this point and fill in the blanks? So the economy, remember, measures the wealth of a country. We can use the GDP to measure that, but a better way to do it would be to use the GPI. Um, we're allocating resources, production, consumption, and distribution. Uh, environmental economics, the key point through valuation and regulation is that we have a sustainable system where the economy drives increases in ecosystem services. So that's environmental economics, and I hope that was helpful.